So you just bought a new turbo and didn't want to spend a lot of money on your turbo build. So you bought a $150 Chinese turbo and you put it in your car and you seem to get higher boost than you wanted to. Well, this is where this video comes in because we are today going to talk about turbo porting and exhaust housing porting, how to do it, how to do it correctly and actually in an extended way with some things added to it compared to other videos that just show how to do it the simple way. First of all, what's the issue I'm talking about? Well, mostly it is about the Chinese knockoff turbos um, that are, if you put them on, a car that's, for example, mostly not turbo stock. So if often on, for example, an MX-5, a Miata, whatever, and you want to run it at a relatively low boost pressure, let's say 0.5 bar or 7 to 8 PSI. Put a different actuator on it and test it out. And while it will open that actuator at 0.5 bar, while we are driving full throttle, at let's say 5000 RPM, your boost goes from this and steadily but slowly rises the boost pressure as you go up the RPM. That is called boost creep. And you don't want that. If, for example, you don't have enough ejector to support that end of the boost line where it will taper to, for example, the longer the gear is, the worse this is going to get. So if you're, for example, starting at 7 PSI, you might end up at like 12 to 14 PSI, which you don't want, obviously. Well, yes, it's not too bad for the engine internals. The rods can take high boost levels at high RPMs. Yes, in most engines, that's not a really a huge deal. But the problem is if you are going to use uh, relatively small injectors like 400, 500, 600 cc's, they might be out of puff relatively soon. Same with the fuel pump and might not be able to support those high boost levels. And you wanna bring those down. All right, the first thing you can do is um, port the exhaust housing. Well, that's basically the only thing you can do. And if you put that exhaust housing on the table and look at the wastegate opening where the flapper closes down, you will see that that's pretty small compared to an original Garrett unit, for example, if you, we take a GT28 unit in this case. The opening where the flapper is closing down in or closing down on is pretty small compared to an original unit. So that's the first indicator where we want to or where we can attack our problem. So what we are going to do here, we are going to close the flapper and mark with our scribe tool or which whatever tool you want, mark around that flapper, that penny, uh, where it is actually closing down on. And from that, you can take about three to four millimeters inwards. So there is still some meat there so that flapper can actually seal. That's very important. If you don't have a sealing surface for that flap, you're going to have um, a leak in between that and you are not going to reach or maybe you are going to reach your boost levels, but much later and you are going to have a lot of lag. You don't want that, so be careful and don't damage that surface, uh, just grind away on the inside basically. So grind away everything until you have basically still a little bit of meat left. There has to be quite a bit so that it closes properly because the flapper also can shift on that rod. So make sure there is a bit left and that it can still close and seal properly. You could now put it back on the car and see if it actually did the trick. In most cases, it will be fine like this, but in engines where the engine will flow quite a bit of exhaust gases, so quite a bit of air, especially with a larger displacement. So uh, for example, a SR20 with two liters compared to 1.6 or 1.8 will floor, flow a lot more air and therefore that might not be enough. There is something else you can do. If you look in the flange of the turbine housing, there to the right side of that there is the flapper for the wastegate. The transition to that is relatively sharp. It is a 90 degree bend. So you are basically 
hoping that the exhaust pressure or the exhaust manifold pressure is enough to drive enough of these exhaust gases into that opening to get the boost pressure down. Most of the time on a well flowing engine, that's not really enough. So what you're going to do is you are going to smooth that transition to the right. You're going to port the exhaust housing so that there is a smooth curve to the right, not a 90 degree edge anymore. So the gases are directed more towards that flap already and are not forced in a straight line and are just forced down the flap by exhaust gas pressure or by manifold pressure. And this will highly add in the flow of that internal wastegate. But be careful in doing this. If you don't have that problem anymore after you paid port the opening, don't do this because this will result in worse spool in the turbo and worse performance because you're obviously directing the exhaust gases to the right. And if the flapper is still closed, they will hit the wall in front of them. So it's kind of a restriction again, and there will be turbulences within the exhaust housing. So that's something you don't really want, but is kind of necessary if you still have these problems. So you have to decide, and it depends highly on your application, highly on your exhaust manifold and on your engine, what you are going to do and how, you, how far you are actually going to go with this. So please make sure if you are going to do both steps, that both steps are actually necessary. Another thing that you can just do as a benefit if you have the turbine housing already off, make sure that the opening from the exhaust manifold to the turbine housing matches, because if it doesn't, there can be a lot of power to be had there, especially because the exhaust manifold pressure will be reduced and also the spool will be a lot better if the exhaust gases aren't hitting a wall pretty much. I hope you learned something from this video and if you have any questions, anything that you want to like, would like to add to this, leave it in the comments down below. As always, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.